It's okay. Now. Okay. Now it's saying the stream is live. Like things are happening on my screen. <laughs> That has that's never happened before. I'm a little bit freaked out. Okay, <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? Things are happening, man. Things are it's happening. Weird. Things are mm -hmm. different today. All up yeah, in here. It's really bizarre. But not for you guys. It's. I'm sure it looks normal for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is fire. It's like hit the button, Mark. Hit the button. Pull the lever. <laughs> okay, um, you guys, make sure that you're put in your pocket. Have you put us in your pocket? Have you clicked subscribe mm -hmm. and put us in your pocket? Because listen, we're gonna just like bother you. We're going to bother you like one of those nagging wives. We're going to be like, push the button, subscribe until you do it. Do it. <laughs> All right, Larry, do it. Okay. <laughs> Take the trash out. Push subscribe. Just do it. Do it. All right. Do so it. there's that. Also, I wanted to, um, I have a point of personal privilege. I wanted to give a shout out to Susan. We went and had coffee last night in Belton, Texas. Was it, I guess it's considered, but yeah, we went to downtown Belton, downtown Belton cute little coffee shop and I talked your ear off for two hours. So I apologize. <laughs> did that, Susan, I'm so sorry. I did that. It's not often that I have like human interaction. That's not swim moms. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Susan, for talking your ear off, but we had a lovely time. So thank you for coffee, Susan. Yay. Insider Susan. Yeah. Insider Susan, even. Insider That's Susan. fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is fun. Um, this is going to be a really all over the place kind of show today because there's like just news that is sort of all over the place. And so it will be reflected in today's lineup. A um, couple things just to mention right out of the gate. Joe Lieberman has passed away at the tender old age of 82. Apparently he had complications as a result of a fall. Oh um, my gosh, really? I know. Yeah, because he was literally on Fox News two days ago, like doing oh his normal commentary. And you never hear about that with dudes. Yeah. But he you know? fell and there was a complication as oh a result. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. God yeah. Bless him. So I you know, know. I know he was a, he, like, he was always a lovely dude, like happy. Yeah. Happy he was dude. always very happy. Mm -hmm. And he was, you know, he was one of the more <clears throat> old school Democrats, not yes. the crazy kind. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it is unfortunate. So that has happened. Also, interesting rumor going around that Catherine Herridge is toying is in talks with X with Twitter to have a show on Twitter. Oh, my God. There's so many of those that's happening, like a lot of shows on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, which is weird to me. Like, I don't understand how you get a formal show on Twitter. Don't you just do it? Cause we do that every day. <laughs> well, so I we don't, don't have, this would be like a deal kind of like okay. the Don Lemon was supposed to be only what they're, they're talking about her not only having a show, but also beginning an investigative journalism team for X for, for X. Okay. All right. Cause it's just, all right. It just is, which weird is very interesting. It's, it's extremely interesting. I love that. I love that. Elon is like, you got screwed. You, you won't get screwed here. You know? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Now she's, you know, still got all of her demon battles with the freaking legal schmeagle, all this stuff, because everybody's after her for stupid reasons. Um, she's got to deal with that yet, but this would be kind of amazing. And it would lend like, I think some huge, not that X doesn't have credibility as a platform, but it would lend even more credibility to it being the first place people should go for news, right? If they're getting investigative journalism right at the source, that's she's, yeah, that would be a good get. No, it'd be happens. a great get. She's awesome. And she actually yeah. is a journalist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. That. So that is interesting. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Don Lamont, his viewership of his show on any platform has completely tanked since the interview with Aww. Elon. Who so feels like, bad? Raise your hand. I know, right? <laughs> so I think at least on YouTube, YouTube alone, that interview got like 1.2 million views. And then the next show, the next long form show he did was with Kara Swisher. It got 96,000. And then the most recent one that he's done with Monique was standing at 14,000 views yesterday. I mean, who, so I mean, anybody, it's going, right. Who cares? Does anybody care? Nobody cares. Don, Nobody cares. Go away. Yeah. So he's trying. He's trying to do the Bless Don Lamar thing, but <laughs> they're there. <laughs> <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> You, you just keep trying. You just keep trying, Don. You just yep. keep trying. Um, also, unfortunate <laughs> update about the bridge. And we'll have, you know, we'll have some commentary and videos about all of that. 
in today's show, but now we're seeing that there are apparently are some of the containers were filled with hazardous chemicals that are now leaking into the river. And so, oh my God, <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys, we start the show and they get up. I'm so sorry. That was some <laughs> flapularity from <laughs> just, Mr. Coda Mr. that we have not ever seen. I want I'm, people to take note of that. <laughs> I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to yell at him. Just continue. I'm going to have to yell at him and just give me one sec. <laughs> she put herself on mute to yell at him. You guys, that is some, he's in trouble. <laughs> he just got scolded. I'm very, very sorry. You guys, I, my, hear, my husband, honestly. my husband will be home in just a few minutes and he will take them out of this room. I promise. I'm very sorry. That this is happening. Of course they are quiet until we start the show. They have been <laughs> quiet every in pre-show. They were quiet. They were like, were they, were they not? Oh, I didn't even know angels. they were with you. Right. They were complete angels for like the whole half hour. We're in pre-show. And the second we start the show, they're like, let's party. I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys. Very sorry. Continue. No, please. next time, do not mute because we want to hear the beatdown. I just said a lot of words to him that don't need to be repeated <laughs> in front of our whole audience because they were. They I think were not people will agree with me that we wanted to hear it. It was a hide your kids, hide your wives <laughs> moment here in the Clark household. Yeah. Anyway. Oh my gosh. I love, love, love that. Um, let me, I want to find my little banner that I need for um, trees. <laughs> yes, because you guys, I'm so excited. The weather here in Indiana is always so weird. Like it'll be absolutely freezing one day and then 70 the it's next so day. This true. is just the time of year. And I never know how that's going to impact the things outside, right? The plants and the trees and the bushes and stuff outside. Uh, my magnolia mm -hmm. tree, like it flowered and now everything's dropping and that's normal. But like, you know, weather is just very unpredictable in Indiana. And you know, I have my lilac tree, right? That I got from fastgrowingtrees.com. It smells so good. Well, not yet, but like, because it's not time yet, but I got that two years ago. I've had it for uh -huh. two seasons. Mm -hmm. The first, when it first came, it's just an itty bitty baby when I first got it. it was yeah. such a baby. I can't believe she's kept it alive, you guys. It's this remarkable. Is what is amazing, right? Oh my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> he wants that deer head. He's trying to eat it, you guys. I'm so, I'm sorry. Oh my continue. God. Please continue with the ad. I am I'm muting. <laughs> well, anyway, what I was going to tell everybody is that the lilac tree, the second year it flowered. Like I got actually two lilac flowers that smelled so good and were so amazing. And so I just checked on it yesterday. And even with the weather being as weird as it's been, I there's tiny itty bitty. You can tell that it's going to leaf and flower. <laughs> And I'm so super stoked. And this is what's great about fastgrowingtrees.com. So biggest online nursery in the United States. They've got more than 10,000 different kinds of trees. Two million very, very happy customers, of which we are both a part of that group. And you can, uh, Daisy got avocado tree. I, I have an avocado tree right. in the back. Yep. Mm -hmm. My beautiful heart-shaped jade plant. Um, and so they make it so easy to order. You do everything online. They ship stuff to you within like one to two days. And then they've also got an alive and thrive guarantee and free plant consultation forever. So like, for example, if I wanted to find out I already know the answer to this, but if I wanted to find out like how, how often am I really supposed to water a jade tree or jade plant, I could just call them and be like, Hey, can you, and they will totally give you all the consultation that you need. They are absolutely amazing. I love every product. I'm so excited that I've been able to keep them alive, especially because I do not have a green thumb at all. And so right now they are offering a 15% off discount to our audience. When you go to fastgrowingtrees.com and you use code chicks, um, you will get 15% off your order. So check them out. Fastgrowingtrees.com. How's the avocado plant doing? It's actually still alive. I'm very excited. It should have avocados in one to two years, they said. So I'm counting on avocados in one to two years. Oh my gosh. That's so exciting. So, 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 <laughs> so exciting. And also we have some people to recognize. Shelly. Thank you. Shelly says honored to share my anniversary month with the chicks. Today is my 50th 
Oh so- my gosh, 55 zero. Wow. Yes. 50th anniversary. That's Wish amazing. I had found you 15 years ago. Thankful to be in your circle now. Heart, 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 heart. She Love says that. there's so Love many that. hearts and Melissa <laughs> Crespo. Thank you. Melissa says tomorrow is my 21st wedding anniversary. Can't catch your show live in the morning, but wanted to say I will miss you chicks next week. I hope, hope you have a blessed Easter and enjoy your week off. Uh, I you, love Melissa. Easter. You guys, I love Easter so much. And happy anniversary uh, happy tomorrow, anniversary. Melissa. Yes. Uh, Connie Cannell. Thank you. Connie says, good morning, chicks. We're all going to miss you next week. I'm not sure what I'm going to do during my shower. Have an awesome vacation. Thank you so much. We really, really need this vacation, you guys. We yeah. got to check out. It's, yeah, it's been. A, yeah, exactly. It's not that we love you guys so much and we're going to miss so you. Much. But we definitely need to check out of the news cycle for a week. Yes. It's going to so be nice much. to do that. And I need to clean out an attic. You have no idea. <laughs> right. It's very, how much very I need important. To do that. Right. <gasps> and Chase and Grace, thank you. Chase and Grace says, I love when the dogs come in your office, Daisy. Let the dogs wrestle. I <laughs> listen. <laughs> Did you guys see Theo was trying? He, his mouth was on that. that oh, he was, he that was like, skull. I'm going to get it. It was like, uh, uh, <laughs> it was on there. Like, no, dude, not for you. Oh my gosh. Lori uh, Weems. Thank you. Lori says, I got my cold, hearty avocado tree and already reported it. Reported it. It's in my mudroom near my back door. What does that mean? Am I, I reading know. that wrong? I got, I already, I already reported, reported it. it. Already what planted. Do you do? No, Did you, you report plant. it to the authorities? I said my mudroom <laughs> near my back door. I don't know. Reported it. It's repotted. Trouble, repotted it. Repotted oh, it. Repotted it. Repotted. Okay, okay. Yes. that makes more sense. <laughs> yes, repotted. There it is. Thank you for translating, you guys. Okay, yeah, because I was not doing well with that. Mm-hmm. Yes, she and she corrected. <laughs> yes. Actually, it's kind of more fun though to think that maybe it was in reported? trouble. Reported. Yeah, <laughs> to the authorities. <laughs> yeah, that was a bad avocado tree. Mm-hmm. So bad, naughty like Theo. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, um, all right. Let's get into some news, shall we? Yes. So earlier this week, of course, as we already talked to you about, RFK Jr. picked his super highly progressive uh, VP running mate Nicole Shanahan. Shanahan. And Trump has now responded to that choice by saying RFK Jr. is the most radical left candidate in the race by far. He's a big fan of the Green New Scam and other economy killing disasters. I guess this would mean he's going to be taking votes from crooked Joe Biden, which would be a great service to America. (laughs) His running mate is even more liberal than him, if that's possible. Kennedy is a radical left Democrat, always will be. It's great for MAGA, but the communists will make it very hard for him to get on the ballot. Expect him and her to be indicted any day now probably for environmental fraud. He is crooked Joe Biden's political opponent, not mine. I love that he is running. I mean, it's a pretty interesting take because he's like, the the communists will make it very hard for him to get on the ballot. They are going to make it hard. Mm -hmm. They are going to make it hard for him now because now they really do see him as a threat because he is more left and he has this radical leftist as a running mate. And so the left is like, oh, crap. Yeah. And they will make it hard because they've up to this point, they've looked at RFK and they're like, he's an extremist. He's a conspiracy theorist. He's a lunatic, you know, and mm. his, his family doesn't like him. You know, there's so it's they hate this guy. They do see him as yeah. a threat. They're going to do everything they can to squelch him. Do you think they'll indict him for something? I kind of don't, don't think they will. Do oh, that. my God. Wouldn't that be great, though, if they did? It'd well, be no, so unless he's guilty of something. I mean, it wouldn't be great. The, the reason I say it'd be great is because it would actually sh- it would show everybody well, that, yeah, these, that these people are in fact dirty commies. Yes. That's what, this, oh, that's, yeah. That would it would be wow. Yeah. And then that it would, would be, be kind bad. of an interesting thing because RFK and Trump could say together, "Oh my God, this is exactly this is what they're doing." Because we know what they are. But if if Democrats who actually were for RFK saw that happen to RFK, they would they could not deny mm. that that's in fact who they are. Yeah, I expect that they're gonna because uh, I can't even remember what state he's on the ballot for. There's one state that he is it Arizona maybe. Um, I can't remember. But in any case, I would suspect that they are going to be focusing very. They're going to set their sights on the swing states first, and if they can at least make an impact there then they'll, you know, worry about all the other states. But I would think that that's where they're going to try to get on the ballot first. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
However, whatever the process is, I'm sure that they're going to do it. But yeah. yeah, they've got a long road ahead. Um, and then speaking of the other two people in the race, Donald Trump and Biden have very, very busy days today for very, very different reasons. And I thought, wow, what a contrast, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So Trump is going to be um, going to the slain officer, Jonathan Diller, the, the cop that got killed by like a 21 time arrested criminal. Um, he was killed uh, in the line of duty. Trump is going to attend his wake while Biden runs off to that fundraiser that we told you about yesterday, the one that's being moderated Colbert. by Stephen Colbert, and it's going to be with Obama and Clinton and Biden. Oh they're, Just they're your, compare and contrast. Right. And compare and contrast the priorities of these two mm -hmm. men. Yeah. I, it's Yeah. Wow. Astounding. And here, here is Jonathan Diller. Um, and it's just a shame because like if they, if Tish James and Alvin Bragg actually prosecuted violent criminals, Did their this, freaking this jobs. Been avoided. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they it's, don't do that. And this, and that's precisely why Joe Biden doesn't want to show his face there. Right. Mm. Cause he's, he's part and parcel to the party that, that doesn't believe in convicting criminals and, and making criminals accountable. Yeah. That's the Democrat party. Why would he want to show his face there? And, well, Trump, and then, is, Trump is the antithesis of that. Yeah. And then KJP in the presser yesterday was asked about this. You, she couldn't even just have like a human moment where she just reacts to the fact that this cop was killed mm -hmm. like a normal person would and just be like, this is just un an unspeakable tragedy. Well, I mean, she had to read from her notes. Well, he's not you know, trans. She had to read verbatim. He's not trans, Mock. So, well, that's true. You know, yeah, she had to read from her notes and she doesn't even mention his name. Like she never says the words Jonathan Diller in this answer, which is it makes it even grosser to me somehow. The fact that it's so insincere. As it relates to um, uh, the death of the officer. Look, our hearts go out uh, to this officer who tragically lost his life in the line of duty. We're also praying for his family during this difficult no, you're time. Not. You're not. Uh, who now has an empty seat at their dinner table. President Biden is deeply grateful for the sacrifices police officers make to keep God, our community safe. Uh, this shooting is yet another painful reminder of the toll of gun violence, that what it's, in, what it's doing to inflict uh, on families and our communities and our nation. Uh, and that's why the president signed more than two dozen executive actions. North Carolina. So it's the guns. It's it's the guns fault. That's what she's blaming it on. OK. Oh my God. And she's not, just awful. Yeah, she is. And she read it and it was just like robotic. Yeah. And yeah. she didn't name him. Say his freaking name. Mm -hmm. I mean, God, it's, it, it just made me so mad. The, the fact that she couldn't even just like a normal human actually just speak from the heart and say, you know, this sucks. And of actually, course, President Biden cares. I mean, whatever she had to say, but actually, like, you know what? she it, couldn't it, even just memorize that little bit. It would have been nice for Joe Biden to come out. And actually do the presser because you know what presidents do that once in a while. It would have been nice for him to come yeah. out and say his name. That well, he's was very, nice. very busy getting ready for Colbert. Yeah, he's <laughs> super busy getting ready to hobnob with celebrities. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we played that clip of um, KJP making an appearance on that North Carolina, the Charlotte radio station where she promptly hung up after two questions because she was mad about how they went. And I didn't realize that she and her team reached out to that radio station asking for her to be on because Biden was doing his his campaigning in North Carolina. So it wasn't like they even went after her. They were like letting her come on their airwaves. And, and KJP and the team, of course, give them talking points. That's why she was mad because they didn't necessarily want to deal with talking points. They wanted to ask her, does your boss have dementia or what? You know what I mean? And so the radio host himself was on with Laura Ingram last night talking about sort of the inside behind the scenes view of this. All right, Mark, what yep. happened here? I mean, you had the nerve to ask the question that millions and millions of Americans would like answered forthrightly. Well, yeah, they, uh, Corinne had reached out to us and asked her, us if we would do an interview because uh, Biden was coming to North Carolina. So we said, sure. And I knew, as you know, doing interviews through the years, you're going to get a lot of talking points. 
So I thought if I could just ask a couple of questions, maybe we'd make a little news, maybe get a soundbite out of her. So I just decided to ask her about uh, all the concern here in North Carolina, even 45 percent of Democrats are concerned about Biden's mental state. So I thought, OK, I brought that up to her. She somewhat dismissed that. And then I just said, OK, well, does he have dementia? And I was surprised that she was so offended. Well, why didn't she just answer the question? I mean, uh, uh, presumably exactly. they have, you know, the best doctor. I mean, just answer the question. No, he doesn't have dementia. What's the next question? I don't I don't get that. Well, why is that a hard question? So exactly. Yeah. Why is it a hard question? Because it's true. <laughs> exactly. It's true. If there was a doctor's statement mm -hmm. that said he unequivocally does not have dementia, they would they be like, she would have said it. Exactly. It's because it's true. He totally has dementia. Yeah. The guy is failing mentally mm -hmm. and they don't want so, but so let's go ahead and, and elect him for four, four more years. Yeah. We should that totally seems, do that. Seems like a great idea. You guys. <laughs> yeah. Um, Janet Yellen, that absolute goblin. Oh my God. She is a troll. She is exactly the kind of troll you would expect to find under a bridge. You know what I mean? Like she's mm -hmm. the quintessential bridge troll. She's like the queen troll. <laughs> she really is. She is. So she uh, has been speaking out recently on a lot of news shows about a lot of different topics. One of them being what she wants Americans to know about Joe Biden. What I want Americans to see is how <laughs> successful um, the president's yes. agenda, which is not just a short term agenda, but a medium and longer term agenda that is designed to create good jobs uh, in parts of the country that in many ways have been left behind um, and making us more secure and bringing down costs for Americans. My God, she is so on shrooms right there. Is she, <laughs> is she not? I mean, like, look at her eyes. She's tripping on the shrooms. She's so awful. She is. Ha who hired this lady? Oh I mean, when you saw somebody saw her and they thought that seems like a good idea. <laughs> what? what? When they heard on? her right? and they, they listened to her and they yeah. thought, yes, this is somebody that this knows is, what they're talking about. This is oh, a my God. Higher right here. Let's get this one on board. And let's she was in a rooms. <laughs> yeah, she's oh, my God. She was in a hearing uh, probably a week or two ago, and uh, Bill Cassidy was questioning her about Biden policy. And it was so <laughs> telling when she actually said the words, he doesn't have a plan. Yeah. This is extraordinary. Listen. Has Treasury really not looked at, OK, we're already charging $4.9 for the deficit, for Medicare, for a lot of other things. And now we got to add social, but we haven't done the math to figure out how much that tax rate the, would have to the be. The president doesn't have a plan. He Shocker. has principles. He wants to work with Congress uh, okay. to find a way um, to protect Social Security and extend its solvency beyond 2034. Now, if the president wishes and he doesn't have a plan, mm -hmm. Madam Secretary, how could he justify not having a plan oh when he's God. been in office for three years already? He believes it's important to work with Congress and, and, and not Madam to Secretary, he has not worked with us at all on this Senate Finance <laughs> Committee. Oh, my God. <laughs> Who's surprised by that, though? I mean, seriously, is anybody surprised by that at all? You shouldn't be. Of course, he doesn't have a plan. He's been doing this for half a century. And he's and yeah. she's like, he's got hopes and dreams. <laughs> right. He's about to die. He has an Amazon wish list. Does that <laughs> <He does>. count? <laughs> he's dreaming of all sorts of things. He's very hopey and dreamy and changey. But, you know, he's literally two days from dying. I mean, she, he hasn't done anything. She said that out loud. Yeah, and then we, I love that Cassie was like, oh, he wants to work with Congress. Well, he's not. He's not. He never does. Mm -mm. So he, he's not done anything useful in his whole life and his whole career. He's not, how, how are you proud? Are you proud of that? My God, what a she's loser. She's horrific. She's horrific. Yeah. And she's then somebody, put, so is he. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody put together um, a montage of all the times in the recent past that Joe Biden has tried to say that he's reduced the debt, which is utter nonsense. Um, and the numbers that he keeps hurling out there are just so all over the place. So I love whoever put together this masterpiece. I cut the national debt 
by one trillion seven hundred billion dollars. We literally <laughs> cut the federal debt in half by one point four trillion dollars. Well, one okay. trillion seven hundred billion dollars. One trillion seven hundred billion dollars cut. We cut the debt <laughs> by one point seven billion in the last two years. Let me say okay. that again. One point seven trillion dollars. I okay. reduced the budget by one point seven billion. Billion? Trillion? We cut the federal the debt in half. Fact. In the first two years of my administration, I cut the debt by $1.7 trillion. Oh, shit. $1.7 billion. $1.7 trillion. $1.7 oh trillion. Dollars. $1.7 Why does trillion. Why did you say that? Why? $1.7 Why billion. Do $1.7 trillion. dollars one point seven billion dollars <laughs> It's a trillion, a trillion, a trillion dollars. <laughs> Not billion, <laughs> trillion dollars. One point seven trillion dollars. Hear me? No one's ever reduced the debt that much. You need a purple. Oh my god. He's like, come the here, debt kid. Is exploded. It is. It it's is. It's not reduced. That's it's just a big fat lie. Come here, kid. Let me whisper this in your ear. <laughs> so creepy. And then cue all the people that are gonna try to defend that and be like, well, what he really meant was the deficit. Uh, how how many times did you just hear that? If He's that's like, what he meant, you don't mess that it. up 17 right. trillion times. Then okay. Say it. Say <laughs> it. My God. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Um, okay. So uh, on the bridge stuff, remember how yesterday I was super mad because he was like, the federal government's gonna take care of the full bill for this bridge repair. And I was like, the federal government doesn't have money. It's the taxpayers that you're talking about. So just say it. At least recognize the fact that we are where you get your money, you a hole. They never will. didn't. They, they never, never will recognize that now. Mm -mm. Well, and now he started to get a lot of backlash about that because people are like, wait a minute, we're paying for that? We didn't we didn't ram the ship in there. Shouldn't the ship people, like the the people that made the mistake, wh whoever is actually <laughs> responsible, shouldn't they own right. some and, of the liability here? And we are busy paying for Ukraine and their pensions. <laughs> right. Very, we have very a busy. Lot of, we have a lot of stuff to pay for, you guys. <laughs> So now uh, other members of the administration are getting asked about that. Like, what did you really mean? Shouldn't the in aren't insurance companies going to pay for this? So Janet Yellen, the goblin, uh, had this to say about it. Will the taxpayers be on the hook? I'm not sure what the details are. We um, have money you? from the uh, bipartisan infrastructure law that could potentially be helpful. Um, my expectation would be that ultimately um, there'll be insurance payments in part to cover this, but um, we don't want to allow um, worrying about where the financing is coming to hold up reconstruction. I mean, why would the Treasury Secretary have any details about this? <laughs> I mean, why would, why would she know? <laughs> it's like a, why would she know how we're spending our money? It's a really big ask, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Go under your bridge. Go back under your bridge, lady. I mean, I just, I feel like the ship people, ship, I should really the try to enunciate that. The ship people. The, the ship, ship people. people have some responsibility here. Maybe you just know what I mean? a, maybe just a smidge. Just a hair. There should be like a anyway. little, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mayor Pete, who I will never call anything other than Mayor Pete. I don't care what his title is now mayor pete also obviously responding to this crisis in his mayor pete way he was asked at the presser yesterday you're not going to hear this question so just so you know what he's answering the question is will this bridge collapse raise inflation like nationally because of all the money that we're now going to be on the hook for to spend to repair it and here was his answer Nation. Too soon to, to say, I think, uh, you know, this is a, definitely a different ballpark from what we saw of the West Coast uh, issues in 2021. Uh, but that's part of what we hope to gather more data on soon. I, I will say, you know, a lot of the disinflation that we've seen has been a result of the work that the president led to improve and smooth out our supply chain. <laughs> Disinfl oh what disinflation have we seen? Mm -hmm. what, year you over year, it keeps going up. You haven't seen that? I mean, come on. I have not seen it. You've not seen that? Like with eggs and gas and uh, everything else in your life, electric, I, I mean, all of it. I mean, I've seen disinflation in take-home pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I've seen disinflation <laughs> that doesn't how much count. my dollar is worth. Exactly. <laughs> Does that not count? 
It doesn't count. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think he wants it to count, but that doesn't oh, count. Oh, he wants it to. Yeah. He I'm super impressed he came out of chest feeding to even give that presser. <laughs> Well, mm -hmm. I think his kids are like four now. So hopefully yeah. he is I mean, well probably, beyond that phase. I bet you there are those people, though, that are like, we're going to chest feed until they're in high school. <laughs> it's good for them. Gross. That's a visual <laughs> I need to unhave. <laughs> Um, and then just an interesting clip from a Democrat rep in California that I've never heard of, but who was also talking about who's paying for this bridge collapse is a guy by the name of Garamendi. And I think he accidentally said a quiet part out loud. Let me know what you think about this. This bridge. But I don't think it has to be federal taxpayer money. This was an accident that was caused by a shipping company. And there is a liability that they in that they have, and they're going to have to participate, perhaps totally, in the cost of rebuilding what they have destroyed. And so that uh, let's first go to the insurance side of it, and then we'll see what's left over. With regard to the timing, it could take forever to get it built. But on the yeah. other hand, we can build quickly if there is a necessity to do so. And there is certainly a necessity here. The environmental issues are uh, should be secondary or maybe not even wow. considered as a new bridge is designed and built. So and maybe we don't even need a new design. There are. That's so weird. So what he's saying is envir the environmental stuff doesn't effing matter. Is that what he's saying? <laughs> I mean, I felt matter. like that's what he was saying. Wow, when he it just said it out loud and like common sense stuff, when you got to build a bridge, you got to get get it like done quickly and like supply chain stuff actually matters and environmental stuff doesn't. He did say that out loud, didn't he? Yeah. That so they can just toss aside environmental mm. regulations altogether yeah. when it's a cause that they need to take care of, right. that they really want to take care of. Just willy nilly. So, so that means it actually in the long run doesn't matter at all. <laughs> oh my I mean, you God. You would think that if you have a principle about environmental regulations, if that's your core belief that those need to be adhered to, mm -hmm. that would be across the board. And yet yeah. here we are. It's so interesting. So, you know that that bridge took five years to build. Mm. Yeah. It, it. I mean, when it comes to bureaucracy and stuff, I was thinking to myself yesterday when I heard that figure, I was like, uh, they're going to have to rebuild that a lot quicker than five years. Well, it's too, I mean, if this was Florida, I'm telling you, DeSantis would there, right. it would be done. It would be done within two or three years. Yeah, tops. It ain't Florida. It's not Florida. And mm -hmm. so I don't know how that's going to go. Stephanie yeah. McDuff. Thank you. Stephanie says Biden thinks 1.7 trillion is half of 34 trillion. Half is 17 trillion. Joe, and it's not half because our debt still is thirty-four trillion. Listen, you're doing math, and you can't. It's like that <laughs> meme of the lady with all idea. the things floating around, all the figures. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like you can't do that, especially to Joe, and especially to Yellen. You can't expect right. her to do math. Exactly. She's the, she's the Treasury Secretary. What do you want her to do, math? <laughs> yeah. Um, are your dogs still in there? No, I kicked them out. Oh, they're they're out. probably okay. destroying my house right now. <laughs> And I'm going to walk out. It's going to be like a tornado hit it. It's it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. Well, if they if they hurt themselves while they're destroying your house, at least you have the That's wound true. pair from Coat Defense. Our friends so at Coat Defense. Do I have? Let me see if I have. No. I, yes, I do. Yes, I do. So first, I have so many things from Coat Defense because their stuff is so amazing. Did you know? I know you do. But in case people watching have never heard of Coat Defense, this is non-toxic, amazing line of products that will cure so many dogs of their itchy, rashy skin and um, hot spots. Hot spots I, put, I put the balm on Theo because he gets hot spots. We've never had a dog that's had issues like Theo. He is just a, a walking issue. He gets the hot spots <laughs> under his armpits. I put the balm. It's like a pink balm that you can put yeah, on there anywhere. I put that on his little armpits where he gets little hot spots. I wash the balm. I know that you don't wash your dogs, but I wash Theo once every two weeks because he gets, he is a Pyrenees mix and they get very, I can't even explain it. I'm a sticky. And so I have wow. to, I wash him every two weeks. And so, yeah, I know well, this so, stuff, it's amazing, ends up smelling yummy, amazing shampoo. It's the best. And like they can ingest it and it's like, it's not going to hurt them, you know? It's yeah. Awesome. 
And then they've got the wound care awesome. um, that treats like any open sores that your dogs might have. And then, of course, this, the magic preventative powder. This is what you can use not only to prevent um, ear infections, skin infections, just the itchy, rashy stuff that they mm -hmm. get, but it also treats. And so before you end up spending a ton of money at the vet, or if you're one of those people that has been told by your vet, oh, your dog needs to be on Apoquel forever and ever, and you're spending all this money on a prescription, mm -hmm. just try this. Just try it and see if you might be sp uh, spending money that you don't need to spend. This stuff is the bomb. Their whole line of products for not just dogs, but cats, horses, and even humans. They do have some human uh, products as well. Really amazing stuff. You can get it at CoatDefense.com. And when you use promo code CHICKS, you're going to save 15% off of your entire order. You will love this stuff. You will love it. CoatDefense.com. Uh, thank you, Erica Eisenring. She says, Carnival Corp paid for the Costa Concordia cleanup. Merck can pay for the bridge. I mean, it does seem like we should not necessarily be on the hook for that. No. You know? We're on the hook for everything else. We're on the hook for everything else, and it just gets worse and worse because look uh -huh. at this. Uh, this news comes from the goblin herself. Social Security and Medicare are now underfunded by 175 trillion dollars that amounts to 1.4 million per household and there are and i will still continue to give nikki haley credit for being the only conservative courageous enough to talk about this right and people would give her shit about it she's the only one who's actually using her brain about it there are only three solutions to fixing this and mm -hmm. that is to slash beneficiaries massively hike taxes or cut everyone's benefits to basically nothing anyway. Well, I mean, something to remember is that Nikki Haley is an actual accountant. Her that is a good point. Her, her background, her bachelor's degree is in accounting. And so, and she was an accountant. And so this, she understands how this shit works. <laughs> it's right. like a lot of people don't want to hear this because the, it's, it's scary to hear this or they want it's, to get reelected. And if they say it, right. they're, 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 you know, worried about their reelection. Yeah, I mean, chances. she's, she's, I mean, it's mean, right. And, and a lot of people don't like uh, all the other things that she said. I know. And at the same, I know. And P Charlotte has a great point. Cause she says, and yes, she wanted to send billions to Ukraine. And I, I totally True. agree with that too. Absolutely agree with that too. But I, and, and America first, I'm totally America first, but, but Trump, if, and when he gets into office, he needs to address this head on. Like we've got to slash spending. We've got to. We've got to Argentina the crap out of our country. Yeah. Well, you know? and I it is probably time to change the system. Mm -hmm. Like it should be changed. And and her point I thought was a good one. We're not talking about people that are 40s, 50s, and in retirement. We're talking about people just joining the workforce that they're it, it has to change for them. And, and that's who we have to start with because mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're not thinking about what, how am I going to retire? Maybe now is the time to switch that group over to something where they're privately investing. You know what I mean? Because I, when I think about the money that I have put into social oh security and Medicare, if I would have invested it myself, I would how much I'd be, better off I'd be. Oh my gosh. I'd be loaded. This is the right. thing. Like if I've been putting money in since I was 13 years old and the, the, the notion that I may not get it, there are not oh enough God. fists to punch people, right? It's like, infuriating. It is infuriating. It's not okay. It's and this is why I say taxation is theft. Yeah. That is theft, you guys. That's theft. When you tell me you're taking my money, and then you tell me when after all these years, I'm 52 years old. You've been taking my money since I was 13 because I've been working since I was 13. I've had a job of some sort, and you've been taking my money since. I, and then you tell me at the end of all those years, like when I'm 75 years old, if I want to start taking Social Security, and you're like, no, you can't have it. We're That's out. Theft. Sorry, we gave it to other people. That Our bad. Actually, I mean, you can't. What is it if it's not theft? What is yeah. it? Oh my gosh, it makes me so mad. Yeah. Um. Apropos of nothing, Megan Kelly was on the Pierce Morgan show talking about what this country is going to look like post election and as dire as her statement is i think she's 100% right and i don't know what we can do about it take a listen to her in just a second <laughs> if watch that again. somehow trump is stopped because of the lawfare against him we've genuinely lost a piece of our identity of what makes us special of one of the things that made us proud to be who we were and it's 
it's a before and after moment. It, it was right at the indictment, but a conviction and certainly one that led to him losing mm. will just will never be the same. There, mm. there will be riots, Piers. There are going to be riots in America either way, because if Donald Trump wins again, I shudder to think about what the left will do. And if he loses, the right and his core supporters are going to be so incensed at the way the justice system was used to stop a victory. I don't think they'll accept the presidency as legitimate, you know, if Biden wins under these circumstances. So already the Dems have shot themselves in the foot, even if they manage to eke out the W, which I agree does not look likely. She's 100 percent correct. I just I need for I just want to fast forward to like next June. You yeah. know what I mean? I just want to yeah. be this we year. To, it's going to be a shit show. Yeah, <sighs> she's 100 percent. I She's right. She's yeah. right. And they've made their bed. They've done that. They've done it. We haven't done that. They've done that. Oh, my God. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right. Um. I need to, you know, everybody knows that in the primary season, DeSantis, Governor DeSantis was my guy. (laughs) I've never hidden it, been completely upfront about it. And I'm telling you what, this guy just keeps on winning. And what's great about him is that he actually responds to the issues that people care about in real time. So when he hears, oh, people are worried about squatters' rights, well, let me fix that. That's that's just how he operates. He's he leads on every issue. And I just cannot compliment him enough about that. Um, and also he scored a huge victory yesterday because Disney decided to drop all of their lawsuits against him, which is a massive, massive win, not just for DeSantis, obviously, but for really for the whole state. And he was so gracious about it that when he went to the presser, he basically said, all right, well, now that the ugliness is behind us, I hope that Florida and Disney can work together to make Disney the best it can be to make it, uh, you know, a a draw for the state of Florida. Let's let's do this thing. And he was like cheerleading for Disney. You know what I mean? Which I was just like, that's such a classy freaking thing to do. He's just there. He was just so good. And let's just remind everybody about the headlines, the gleeful headlines that were all over the place when Disney sued. I mean, and we're talking even like the Wall Street Journal, DeSantis's miscalculation because Disney's playing the long game. I mean, you can expect Vox is going to be like Disney just beat right. it. Mm-hmm. Out, you know, I love I love salons out negotiated by Mickey Mouse. Right. <laughs> okay. I mean, the, oh God. and you know, they are not reporting the news from yesterday. You know oh, that they're no. not. They're like, so, oh, we're just oh, going to. Salon, salons definitely, they're like reporting on something that has to do with like transgender something or other. Yeah, they have, yeah. they're definitely not going to do Like it's, it's classic. This is classic MSM. If you won't even call these people MSM, but that's, it. that's exactly what it is. They're not going to, mm-hmm. of course, they're not going to report on this and they're definitely not going to report on his, um, I don't know. What do you want to call it? Generosity or his, his graciousness about right. it. Yeah. I got to tell you, I'm still not going to Disney. <laughs> still not, <laughs> not doing it. Yeah, We have no, we have no plans mm-hmm. to do that either. Not going. Um, and even Trump as recent, like, when was this, this would have been April of last year. Um, he, he said that this was a bad move on DeSantis. DeSantis is being absolutely destroyed by Disney, he said. And he went on. And then at the end, he said, in the meantime, this is also unnecessary, a political stunt. Ron should work on the squatter mess. Well, Ron did just that. So yesterday he signed a bill eliminating, completely eliminating squatters' rights in the state. And Christopher Rufo uh, rightly pointed out that it's worth stating the obvious. Conservatives identified a legit problem that squatters were depriving homeowners of their right to property, and DeSantis immediately solved it. No fanfare, no bloviating, no fundraising emails, just problem solved. What's next? And that's his way. And here he is talking about it. Does your house belong to you? Or if you are not using it, can someone just come in, squat for a period of time, and then claim that they have a right to be there? This so-called squatter scam is something that's happening around the country. There's even videos telling people how to go in and take over an empty house. Uh, That was never how the law was supposed to work. Uh, And in Florida, uh, we are gonna take action today to end this scam and to protect the private property rights of our homeowners. 
You should not have anyone go on your property and take it over uh, and then try to assert some rights. It's absurd. Uh, we're going to put an end to it today and we'll be leading the way yet again in the process. A place yeah, Always. I wish that I wish Abbott would do this, you know, because like it's it's kind of a free for all in Texas, too. Like we have a little cabin on our property. And my husband was talking about this yesterday because all the squatter stuff is coming up. And, you know, there are a lot of illegals coming through yeah. Texas. Right. And so he's like, you know, there's some some sort of person that's not supposed to be on our property coming in and trying to, like, live in our cabin. F.A.F.O., you know, <laughs> they may never find that person again. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, is this what are you going to do? It's if you have if you have no rights to your own property, right? Not America. It's I mean, crazy. Good, good for Ron DeSantis for doing that. It's I hope Abbott will follow suit because he usually does things like after everybody else does it. Right. He's like, oh, everybody <laughs> else is doing that. I guess I'll do that, too. Yeah. But well, I mean, it's our governor here. I don't even know what he does. Like, I never hear his name. He He's utter, he's inconsequential. Right. Our governor. Mm -hmm. This is. Yeah. Just, I mean, how sad is that? But it's, it's but the sad. fact that we even have to like create any sort of pseudo legislation to deal with this issue. It is your right? house. I know. That's what's so crazy is that there are even laws dedicated to squatters rights. It's that's insane. Bananas. Yeah. And what about the castle doctrine? <laughs> it's like it makes no sense. Get Yeah. Get off my lawn. Yeah. Yeah. So oh Jesse Waters, you know, everybody was talking about this on Fox. Jesse Waters um, had this to say. And for people who are looking for housing. You got to hand it to DeSantis. He is the most responsive governor mm -hmm. in the United States. And you're, what you're watching is representative democracy. And it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> the people want something. Mm -hmm. The politicians listen and then they execute. And it's not just the squatting. Think about it. Who has the most clean, efficient election? Florida. Florida. You right. find out that night who won. And there's no fraud. They found out about DEI and CRT in schools. A month later, it's knocked out. Their beaches are beautiful. All of their <laughs> interiors gorgeous. I've been down there hunting alligators and snakes. Mm. <laughs> their, their state taxes are low. Every time you think of Florida, you think, wait a second, this yeah. is where you want to live. Yep. They, you have concealed carry. You have stand your ground. Beautiful. It honestly is paradise. They don't let the Chinese buy farmland. You want something, you live in Florida, you ask the politician, the politician, oh my God, actually does what the voters want. If every politician and state could be like Florida, we would be in a much better place. Jessica, yeah. I'm sure. And Democrats make fun of it, but they retire there. Exactly. It's like, exactly. shut up. Yeah. It's like, what are you, you going to retire in New York City? No. God, just give me I, a break. I'm not going to say the things that I'm thinking, but I'm mm -hmm. thinking the things. You're and thinking just, all the, you're thinking all the mean things. You're thinking bad words. Well, I'm just thinking, that, I'm no, I'm just thinking what a lost opportunity for the well, country. You I'm know. just thinking that. Give it time. Eight years of give lost it, opportunity. Give it time. Give it time. Okay. I will. I'm just going to be patient. He's very young. So. He's got never, a long never career know. ahead. You just never know. <laughs> Give it time. Mm -hmm. um, this is, you guys are about to see something very cringe, uh, but I think after you see it, you're going to appreciate it. Sage Steele, um, who you may know from such things as being on ESPN and then having the audacity to speak her mind politically and then, of course, being summarily Can't do removed that. from, Can't canceled from ESPN. Mind. No. I didn't realize, just told Daisy about this yesterday, and she didn't realize this either. You may not know it also, but Bill Maher has like an, a, a whole platform um, such that he hired Sage Steele to host her own show on his platform. Yeah, and, and I'm, so, I'm a little leery of that contract. Like I, I said to you, I said, <laughs> I hope that that he was not stoned when he drew up that contract because that would be a little bit weird for me to work with him. I, you know, it. well, I props to him right like he's he does the he things. does do he some does things all the things that are yeah. right mm -hmm. and um she's enormously she's gorgeous she's going to be normal yeah. she's enormously talented she'll it'll be a great show mm -hmm. uh her very first guest right out of the gate was dana white and dana as you know not particularly into going traveling the country to do shows of other people like he's a busy guy and he's very choosy he purposely wanted to be on her show because he admires her a great deal I told you this before pre-show, but this is the weirdest thing because just yesterday morning, I was thinking to myself, man, 
Joe Rogan and Dana White are identical twins to me. See, I, see, I, oh I my god, I don't think that they are. I just oh my don't. god, they look so similar to me. Well, one has hair, right? I they mean, neither. They no, neither of them have hair. They're it, both Joe bald. Rogan, is Joe Rogan bald now? Is no, Joe, he's, he's always been bald. Oh no, he's not always been bald. Back in the eighties and nineties, he had lots of hair. Well, but like as long as he's been doing his podcast, he's been, he's bald. been a bald. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, maybe it's because he's like he's so dark and and different. He, then Dana White is more like I, he's just I don't know. Dana just seems I think like a, they are identical. I don't twins. and they and personality wise, I think they're different. I think Joe Rogan is a little softer than Dana White. Yes, bald and beefy. That's the perfect way to describe. They are bald. Them. They are bald and beefy. Yeah, they do. Okay, all bald, other people get them confused too. Up, all bald white guys look alike. Not really. No, that's my not husband's true at all. bald, and he looks nothing like those guys. No, he does nothing. not. But no. these two, I, I do. I mean, I do a double take. So anyway, I say all that because then to find out about this clip existing was almost was completely mind blowing to me. So she has da Sage Steele has Dana White as her first guest. And she makes this mistake. What's Joe Rogan's dream? Oh my God. What's Joe Rogan's dream? Joe Rogan, Dana White. Oh God. What's Dana White's dream? Oh God. Did you just think I that totally was Joe did. Rogan? I totally did. She just called me fucking Joe Rogan. Oh you thought it was fucking Joe Rogan? Yeah, I thought you were I Joe was Rogan. bald no. before Joe was ever bald. I okay? oh just did a two hour God. fucking podcast. I flew here from, from Vegas and, and, and she Jesus. thought she was interviewing Joe Rogan. Jesus. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> oh my god. She so is the one you guys. She is the one that posted that clip and I could not applaud her any harder. I mean, for that's owning it. She's so big to do that, right? Oh my god. Cuz can you imagine if we did that, we would have been like, "Oh my god, I'm like we're ending our career forever. Like we're done. <laughs> we're going to go crawl in a hole." I mean, that <laughs> that is so mortifying. It's so she cringe. Is Awesome. Oh my God. So awesome. And yeah. so, you know, Alex Stein posted and she's he's like, this is so sad to watch. And she was like, I could have had them edit it out, but I don't take myself that seriously. Gotta own it. I mean, she posted this. She's I awesome. Love her. Yeah, she's completely awesome. Cause she, I love this it. so much. Yeah, and she'll she'll succeed. She will succeed God. because of that. You can, and you can't, it. you cannot take yourself so seriously. Cause so many people do, right? Yeah, you know, I, just think, I just think, and nowadays so, I just had so much like affection for her after yeah. seeing her do this. Oh and, my gosh! And honestly, because when you do podcasting like this, when you do interviews like this, like this is a live show. We're doing a live show right now, so anything we say, it's, it's we could screw up, and it lives forever, right? Right. What that was was a pre-recorded interview. She could have taken it out, mm -hmm. and she could have said, "We got to do that over." She didn't do it. She didn't do that. So good for her. good for her, right? She's like, okay, well, I screwed up. It was my first one. She was probably a little nervous. And God bless her. You I know. know. I love that. I just love that. I love her so much for that. I yeah. just, and I hope she has like so much success. Just yeah. love, 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 love I that. agree with you, Mock. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a new term that you probably say, uh, it's not a new term. I, I'm phrasing that wrong. There is a term or, or, or a word, I guess, a phrase that you Everybody has said it a million times. How often do you say a hundred percent? Um, I'm I don't know how often, but I've said it before. But like, would you ever think in a million bajillion years that that is now considered racist by the oh, anti defamation league? <laughs> my God, what is even happening? What are you saying to me right now? <laughs> um. You guys, it is now considered to be shorthand for 100% white. I, what, I don't even know what's happening. <laughs> oh my God. Our world. I know, right? I just, just I, it's just stop the world because I want to get off. I want to get <laughs> off of the world. I, this is just the dumbest thing. I, this is the dumbest thing I've heard all week, and that's saying something. There's been some <laughs> dumb stuff this week. I know. I just, I could, like, I was, I saw this and I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, what? The, people are not going to stop saying 100%. And who said, okay? <laughs> and who deemed this racist? There's some person that said, I'm going to decide that this is racist. This is, this is a term used <laughs> by white supremacists. I deem it so. <laughs> how about you're racist? If you think it's racist, how about you're the person who's probably the racist? 
Because it's yeah. always the people who say that's racist that are the racists. It's always projection. Always. always. Yep. Um, also, I don't know how involved you all get in the infighting between conservatives that happens on social media. I, oh my God. <laughs> We debated about having a schlong about the fight currently happening between Steven Crowder, his almost soon to be ex-wife, Hillary Crowder, and, like and then everybody, like everybody. all these other people, Pearl. I, everybody. There are so many people that are now mad. There's like gay, not gay Jared, the guy that used to be on his show. There's like lawsuits. All Candace. this stuff is happening. Candace is involved in a fight with Rabbi Shmuley and who and all kinds of other people. She's mm -hmm. also taking Hillary Crowder's. Anyway. There are so many ridiculous fights happening right now on social media between very prominent conservatives. This is the stuff that makes us never, ever, ever want to achieve that level of success. Yeah, I just don't. And I and and there are a lot of conservatives out there that are they they um, make a living now off of picking on other conservatives and picking on other people and telling them what to do. And that drives me crazy too. I don't like it. I just don't yeah, like, what is that? That's it. And so, and I told Mock this morning, remember when we were the only ones doing this? Because we've been <laughs> alive for like a thousand years. <laughs> I miss those days. I miss the days when we were like the <gasps> only ones in a sea of very serious people. And like, we were the, we were the non-serious people, you know, who yeah. like, we, we were the Romy and Michelle at the lunch table. We were very, we were the ones just sort of having fun going, ha, those people are so serious. Ha. We're not serious, <laughs> you know? And now there are a lot of people who are pundits who are just sort of like in the social space and everybody's chit chatting and talking about everybody else and trying to pick fights and trying to cause drama to get clicks. Yeah. And it drives me insane. I hate it. And I, and Democrats don't do this as much as we do. They just don't. I, I don't see it. I definitely mm -hmm. don't see it. But I mean, when I tell you how many prominent, influential conservatives are getting themselves involved in the Crowder divorce right. and like, I could not care less. Like, I don't want to know. I just. Why is this even a thing? Okay, like it, I, n this should not be a thing. No, and it so, shouldn't be out there. They're getting a divorce. Like the only thing that anybody should be concerned about is the kids. Just yeah, shut up and let these people raise their kids, and that's exactly what they should be doing. Everybody else, thought, shut up. Well, if this was, you know, if this is like really the news, then maybe we should do a schlong about it. And then I was like, but I don't want to learn about it. I don't mm -hmm. want to know all the intricate no, details of this totally. of their and divorce. So we just don't. Yeah. <laughs> we so we're not doing it. So I, I can't tell I think in, in terms of a side of the Crowders, I think they all sound awful. Like yeah. everybody in the family sounds awful mm -hmm. at this point. And I just don't, I don't want, I watch yeah, every, the whole thing. Everybody sounds awful. And as somebody who's been a child of divorce and somebody who has been a stepmom and I've been, we've had, I have a blended family. The kids are losing. That's, yeah. a, that's my take on that. I mean, everybody just needs to back off, let these people go through it. And they need to be the ones that are, they're dealing just, Stop it. Everybody stop. Right. Good Lord. And then, you know, this all, this kind of all started to seem to be a thing when Crowder started that fight with Daily Wire, right? Like that's when all of these behind the scenes fights that we normally wouldn't know about, that's when all of them started to become more public. And now, of course, Daily Wire has cut ties with Candace. And so that's a whole thing. And she and Ben Shapiro were fighting. There's just so much drama. It's exhausting. And apparently now, um, Candace is fighting with a guy, a rabbi by the name of Rabbi Shmuley, who's pretty out there from what I can tell. I don't know his stuff well. I've seen enough of it to think he's definitely not my cup of tea, but whatever. I mean, you can follow him. They just do not like each other at all. So Rabbi Shmuley and Candace Owens very much in a fight. And Alex Jones, apparently, and this same rabbi have also been in fights and apparently in the past, Rabbi Shmuley has accused Alex Jones of like having a very small penis. Like this is the level of fighting I'm talking about. It is ugly and stupid. And just to give you an example, um, this is a clip from Alex Jones who decided to have Rabbi Shmuley on his show. This is like recent. And the way this conversation goes, I just, here's what we're talking about. <laughs> I just cannot believe. Let's talk about the reality. You just said that the Jewish people battle pornography. You're the guy on Howard Stern doing all this wild stuff. You're the guy in videos you release yourself. It looks like your grandson or some kid that you're 
table dancing on, grinding on him. You're grabbing, I think it's your granddaughter's or a little girl's breast. You are, you're, you're talking about my penis on air and, and just now that my penis is small uh, and all the rest of this stuff. And, and you're sitting there, are a famous guy for, 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 you know, being, let, let's just say wild. I wasn't going to raise the fact that you got kosher dildos and butt plugs. I would ask her, are you wearing one now? And then you I'll tell me, <laughs> do you have a butt plug right now? Um, may I answer? Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Butplug. Oh, my God. May I answer? Okay. Do you have a model called the Holiness? This is, this like, is where we are. Right. Mm-hmm. It's Somebody said Satan is loving all this. Yeah, he is, isn't he? I mean, what is mm-hmm. even happening? I know. This is, <laughs> like, I know, right? Like, I just, can we just not? Oh, my God. Everybody is just being so juvenile you know yeah. what i mean mm-hmm. like there's a difference between, i mean and we and we are juvenile but totally <laughs> but we're I'm not gonna say there's a difference we're... between us being silly and juvenile exactly. and I being know. gross yeah. on a whole other level I and know. picking these kinds of fights it's just oh stupid my God. it's just it's really stupid i know i know anyway. it's like i know i want to get off the i i need to get off the world it's like yeah stop the world i need to get off so if I you know. guys were coming to us for a take on all of these fights our take it's, is these fights are stupid. They're all <laughs> that's, stupid. That's the everybody's take. everybody's stupid. Yeah, and mean <laughs> and somebody said meanwhile Rome burns. Yeah, we all Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Um speaking of juvenile, we're going to do a little trip down memory lane oh uh, for God, people we had, we had referenced this and and talked about possibly posting this in our insiders and supporters group and then I thought, you know what? It we we have to talk about we have to explain it before we play it. And so just to give people an idea of what you're about to hear, and it's going to be a blank screen. There's no video. It's just audio because this is from our radio days. When we used to do sponsorship ads on the radio, we recorded them in advance and read a script, right? Like we had a script that we would read. And sometimes the clients would give us scripts that we like to write our own. We, we very much like to read ads the way that we read them and talk about our sponsors in the way we want to talk about them. But sometimes we're not allowed in radio. Yeah, they said there are a lot of, yeah, there are a lot of clients in radio that were very particular about the way things had to be done. And so we had to do it. And we didn't really like that very much because we were not rule followers and we did not like scripts. We don't like scripts now. We don't like scripts. We didn't like scripts in the past and we're not very good with them. You know, no. as evidenced by <laughs> this. <laughs> so this is just, this is you clip. guys, you <laughs> just need to know in advance that one of Daisy's lines was literally, <laughs> ha ha. Okay. <laughs> you need to know that before you listen to this ad for our former sponsor, Zero Res. I'm to talk about our carpet cleaning heroes at Zero Res. People who haven't cleaned with Zero Res may wonder if you can even tell the difference between carpet cleaners. Fair question. It's easy to call the guy with the cheapest coupon you can find or rent a cleaner yourself. Okay, that's a terrible idea, and you're going to get what you pay for. You have thousands of dollars of carpet in your home. Is it really worth gambling? Ha <laughs> <laughs> This is when we lost it. I can't. I can't what do it. It's supposed to mean. I don't know. What the hell I, is just, that? I can't. I couldn't do oh it. Oh my god! What? And there, our guy I Eric can't. is in there. I can't. I can't. <laughs> the line is ha. I can't. We can't do that. I can't. I can't, I Eric. I can't. I can't do that line. I can't. I am. So- Oh my God. Okay. So Eric is the guy. Eric was our, he was the guy that always did. He recorded our ads like on a weekly basis. And I loved him so much. I miss him. I have to see him when I come back to Indy and yeah. June. I will go, I will go in there and just make a beeline for Eric because he was so patient with us every week. <laughs> Cause we would have to do that. We had to do things over and over and over again. God bless him. I couldn't do it. You guys, this is why I could never be an actress. Cause I would see that line and I couldn't, I couldn't do I- it. Died as you can hear. Like as soon as she said that, <laughs> she goes, ha! <laughs> ha! That was me. That's me acting. I can't. Oh my God. I Greatest thing it. ever. Yeah. The other uh little flashback that we have uh, back in the day, we used to have a voicemail line and um oh we my would God. play some of the voicemails on air, and some of them were very, very nasty. And there was one very woman bad. in particular 
older lady who hated us. She hated, hated us. me. She hated me more than you. She used to ask. She used to. She challenged me to a duel on Monument <laughs> Circle. If you guys know where that is in Indianapolis, it's like the main circle in the <laughs> middle of the city. She, she wanted to stop pinging me. Yes, that's her. Oh my that's God, her. you guys. She used to, she challenged me to fight her and she was so old and we called her poached egg lady. That's what we called her poached egg yes. lady because we used to say that's all she could eat now. She's probably 98 years old. I'm pretty sure she's dead now. I'm pretty sure there's no way she's still living. There's no, no way. way that she is still living amongst us. There's no way she was so old and she used to be like, Daisy can fight me. A monument circle was so old with her old voice. God bless her. God rest <laughs> your soul. <laughs> And she so. would call. And then for some reason, I don't even remember what made her say, stop pinging me. Um, I don't <laughs> remember never why her. she said that. Because it's like, we, yeah, we, we never, never called, called her. her. Yeah. And I think it was that she, I think she was getting like notifications on Facebook is my right. only guess yeah. about she why know. she would have said we were pinging her. She didn't know how to use so it. So she would leave voicemails saying, stop pinging me oh. and we would be like <laughs> I, we're perfect. not doing anything it's a really good She's impression crazy. Of her. she was a lunatic crazy mm -hmm. anyway from the archives <laughs> from the bowels of my computer i retrieved a voicemail how i have this i have no idea oh my god this Delighted. is poached egg lady i don't know i didn't even listen to this one i wanted to blind react to it with you i just saw that it was poached egg lady was the um was the the name of the file. And I was like, Oh my God. So I don't know what she's saying in this one. This may be the duel. I don't think it's the duel. Cause I don't remember ever saving that, but here is poached egg lady. Tired of you acting like you speak for the people of the state of Indiana or the city of Indianapolis. You do not speak for me or anyone I know. Now listen, you two jerks, <laughs> jerks on the right. It is none of your business what other people, how other people vote, or what other people think. And I can tell you one thing. Hillary Clinton is a lot better looking than Carly Free of uh, Freak Arena. That you are so disgusting. Okay, wait. We have to pause. For <laughs> Carly Freak Arena. Oh remember Carly Free? Remember? <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <what> <laughs> Oh my God. I loved her. She so would... this was back in the day during the primaries. Yes. Then. Yes. So Carly Fiorina was running for president. Hillary Clinton. Yes. So she was trying to say Hillary Clinton was better was looking than Carly totally. Fiorina or was... me or me. She makes fun you. of my name. Yeah. So... Yeah. Or mock. She was, Oh my God. Y'all. She hated us. She hated oh us my God. so much. Let yeah, me keep playing. Was... You are, your, your word means as much as Greg Garrison. How many books of armed justice did he sell? <laughs> You're a bunch of creeps and you have ruined WIBC. And after this election is over, because we've been told not to, there's going to be a lot, a lot of boycotting your sponsors. <laughs> so take it, jerks on the right. <laughs> Oh my god, I loved her. I just I'm loved her. I'm saving that forever. I'm saving oh, that forever. God, that is the greatest. I mean, that was like probably one of the tamer ones. And then she would call and she'd be like, I'm gonna fight you on the circle. <laughs> and I was like, should we do this and like charge admission? Because I will fight her. <laughs> I mean, I'll go easy on her. Oh my this god. could be good. Oh my that, god. That was so, man. Good times. We should good bring times. back a voicemail line. We, we have one. I know, but bring it back and actually play. But people tell people about it. You know what I mean? Like broadcast yeah. it, tell people about it, and like bring back actual really mean voicemails. Because man, there's some good ones. Yeah. You know? Well, and we've gotten a couple mean voicemails. I think mm -hmm. I think we did play one um, since we've done podcasting and not radio. Because it was a girl that like I was like, what is the word that she says right here? Remember, it was like this really really vulgar one i probably have it saved somewhere um but yeah our, our phone number is listed on our website contact information and i think it's still on our facebook page if i'm not mistaken um but yeah we should probably like i should get a banner at some point and say totally. come and on just, haters like, call, our, call our hotline haters like it's the <laughs> hater hotline and then we yes. can just play the hater hotline and we can just play i'm totally somebody. gonna do that we should I'm totally do, gonna it. do it because we do have a, a a number that you can call yeah 
Uh -huh. yeah. We don't check it very often because we're not on the radio anymore, but Oh my God, we got to bring that back. I know that's a fantastic idea. I hope, I hope haters totally do it, do that. especially for our YouTube shorts. Cause man, the haters come out full force on our YouTube yes. shorts for sure. We should totally broadcast it and then play it. Yes. Oh, that'll be so much fun. Just okay. We're going to do that when crazy. we get back. When yes. we get back from vacation, that's going to be a new thing. Mm -hmm. All right. It's time for your double D. Okay. This is a, uh, the, this is the barniest barn cat in Barnville. <laughs> I love this cat. You guys. The life of a barn cat. Can you spot him? Here he is. Where? Oh, oh right there. There he is. You see him? You see him? Hey! <laughs> quit eating my bed. Quit eating my bed. I just Aww. I love that cat. I know I need a barn you cat. Isn't he need cute? A cat. You're gonna need a cat. He wasn't an orange one though. I'm kind of partial to orange cats, but you know, he was cute. Very, very cute. You're going to need a kitty, kitty I'm gonna cat. Need, I'm going to need a cat. Um, after we do a few talks, we are going to have a conversation about this phenomenon, especially in New York City, but probably elsewhere, too, of just random men punching women in the face on the street. I don't know why this is happening, but it is happening. And we're going to get into that and crime after we share a couple of talks, which, of course, are brought to you by our great, great friends at <laughs> MyPillow.com slash chicks. By the way, there were headlines going crazy yesterday going, Mike Lindell's warehouse has been shut down and taken away from him because he can't pay the bills. But people don't read the actual article. <laughs> okay. So if you actually read the article, it says this was a spare, like extra inventory warehouse that was sitting empty for months and his main warehouse is fine. Everything is fine. Um, but it's not, it's not false that he's having financial difficulties because of how many different retailers have boycotted him and gotten rid of his products in their stores, which is stupid because his products are amazing. And mm -hmm. if you haven't gotten yourself something from mypillow.com <coughs> slash chickset and use code chicks, you are missing out on some seriously big savings. Yeah. So Get the slides him and support us Get by doing slides. that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Paula Johnson. Thank you. Paula says, LOL. This is my favorite show. Bring back more oldies, but goodies. I mean, I don't fun. have a lot, but she I is mean, the pack those... rat. She saves everything. We I would have saved so much oh, more God. if I, you know, I just had, we I didn't known. think about it in the time. I didn't think no. that they wouldn't keep stuff. Like I yep. always thought there'd be a way to come back to WIBC and we just both go, hey, didn't. you still have that file. Yeah. We both didn't know they didn't, they don't save anything in radio. So we don't have a lot of evidence that we were even there. <laughs> but man, we had some good stuff. We have some good videos. We could probably find some cute videos from when we were there and then play you some snippets of those because those yeah. were some good, good times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's always the infamous segment about Eddie and whether or not he's Are walking. Are you walking, Eddie? <laughs> the, there's no, that will be saved forever and ever, ever. and always. And mm -hmm. that is actually on our YouTube channel. It's like one of the greatest things of all yep. time. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite segment that we've ever done together on anything ever. Oh, and you know what we will bring back? And maybe tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, I do know that I have the lesbian taco story. Oh, we definitely. That would be such a I great thing to do that. before okay. vacation. Yes, yes. The we'll lesbian tacos the lesbian were tacos so tomorrow. great. You guys we'll definitely love the lesbian tacos. We'll <laughs> end with that. That will be fantastic. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll do that for sure. All right. So in the meantime, let's get to a couple of talks because I've got some good ones today. First of all, can you imagine being this woman? Okay. Apparently nobody in real life can help me with uh, the, the fact that I found a baby owl on the side of the road, not even the fire department. And I have him in my friend's like little bag and he's just oh in there. Oh my gosh. Hi. Oh my gosh. And I don't know what to do. Oh my gosh. I figured gosh. I'd come to TikTok. Has anybody else dealt with a baby owl before? What do I do? All the wildlife centers are closed. What is I don't know what to do. Baby. And him really scared. And he keeps like clicking his beak. And I've just been like lugging this giant thing around with me, like hanging out with him. I don't know what to do. Like the fire department was basically like, bye. I was like, don't people like literally leave whole ass human babies here? <laughs> and you can't even help me with little man. Whole so ass human babies. His mother probably kicked him out. No, honestly, I don't know what happened, but I found him and he couldn't fly. Anyway, she's got herself a new owl now. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that. That's a you got to figure out what to do with that. You can't keep that oh in the backpack, gosh. lady. You can't <laughs> keep it there. Um, I'm I plead to help uh, for help from all of our audience. There is a trend going around on TikTok right now, which is my new favorite thing, which is where couples have an indoor date night, and what they do is they there's a kit 
where you can paint your spouse. <clears throat> and so you sit across from your spouse and you have your little paints and you paint a portrait of each other. I have seen the results yes. are hilarious. Oh and I have looked and looked and looked online to find this kit and I cannot find it. And I'm usually very, very good at figuring out how to find stuff on the how internet. To find things, yeah. Mm -hmm. I cannot find this kit, you guys. So if anybody knows how to get it, I'm dying to do this with my husband. Dying to do it. And here is why. Because it ends up being like the best date night of all time. <laughs> oh, my Did God. The leather face on that painting. What? Or was it just me? Oh, I didn't. I don't. That didn't even matter. The point is, did you see her face? <laughs> oh my gosh! Her her, it was some awful. Some of the results are just. I oh am my not. God. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. I, I'm the worst artist ever. That's you just, what makes it great. That's why you have to. Kelly J just said, just buy paint supplies. Why do you need a kit? Why don't, I don't you just know, go? Because don't you have to like know exactly what colors to use for like flesh? I don't know how to buy just a human go. kit. Go to Michael's or or Hobby Lobby and just ask somebody and be like, "Hey, we want to do like date night and paint each other. Give me, help me find some canvas and some paints. What do I use?" Really, that's it. That's all you have to do. Yeah, I thought it was a paint. whole need kit that gave yeah, you everything just, you needed, and then you just did it. Just just buy paint supplies. Yeah, no, yeah. I totally want to do that. Maybe we'll do this on spring break. Yeah, there you go. Do that. Oh my yeah. God! This I know I can't, fun. Becky. I can't draw a straight line without a ruler either. I'm, I oh, suck same. at art. I'm the worst. Like my husband would end up looking like I don't know a giraffe. I like which I can't. is why you have to it's do it. Awful, awful. Yeah. Oh my God! I have. Like, we I play have Pictionary to do with our. We'll play picture. We'll play Pictionary with the kids, and the kids are like, I don't want Amy on my team. <laughs> I don't. It's terrible because I can't. I can't draw anything, and I just end up like acting it out, and you can't. It's off. I'm you the worst. Do, I'm do you the, do the thing? Do you do the thing in Pictionary where you draw the thing and then you get so frustrated that somebody can't get it that you just keep poking at it? Yes, I stick it. <laughs> I start stabbing it. I stab the thing. Yes. Yeah. Why do we do this? I, I totally because do the I same can't thing. Draw because I can't draw anything. And then our oldest daughter is basically like a, she's an artist, and everything is elaborate, and she's oh, drawing, geez. and she's putting in like flowing hair and everything. She's like, why can't everybody be like me? And I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> Ridiculous. But I never. But people do this. You stab the the picture that you can't that nobody can tell what it is. You just keep stabbing it, thinking that that's going to help the person it, yeah. guess harder. Why can't you guess? It does that not I'm work. Stabbing it. I'm stabbing it. <laughs> right. Over it and over work. again. Doesn't it doesn't work. work. Mm -hmm. Um. This dog is my best. My best. Best. Best new friend. Look at this. Does anyone else's dog just sit at the table? Oh my god, I love him. Every single meal. It's breakfast right now. He's so great. He just sits with us and we didn't make him sit here. And it's, he just, oh no, he just loves the company. No, I love him. This is him at Christmas. We didn't make him sit here. He just sat here the whole time. Oh my God, like my mom and I like, will come downstairs or we'll be doing something. And he's just sitting at the table casually. A, like he'll just sit He's and a distinguished ponder. gentleman. He is distinguished. I don't know. Like when we set the table to Look. eat, he sat ready. <laughs> And he he sits there with us, I and he never him. tries to eat the food oh that we're eating God. ever. Like he's he doesn't just try to eat the food. Does not matter what's going on. He's always just. You should give him the food. He just doesn't try to eat it. Does anyone? I love that dog. I Best love dog. Him. Best dog. Oh you my give God. him Best the burger because he doesn't want it and he doesn't try to get it. That's when you give him the burger. You give him all the things. Yeah, because that's some serious. That's Sweet some good boyness right there. Boy. That's a really good boy. Uh, you know, I love me a good scare prank, and this is one of them. You probably this, but <laughs> you want to film our candy video now? Huh? Oh my god, oh, that's so yes. nice. Come say hi, hurry. Hi. Come bring this to <laughs> 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 Harvey. Huh? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I look at this, bro. So what the me. fuck, dude? What was that? What? Huh? This TikTok video. The fuck is that? <laughs> Relax. Relax, he says. Oh shit! I'm gonna. What the fuck? That is the goal. Sagro. Oh my god. What the fuck? What the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> 
Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god oh my, oh my god <laughs> just you don't I'm want it sorry, listen but that if the was spider's on your face you don't want to smash it into your face <laughs> you want to no, whip it not, off of you you know what i that's mean that's not the way to do it that's not you don't want to do that especially a tarantula you don't want to do that <laughs> oh, i just i love those so much love love love, love them all right um Let's talk about what's going on in New York and uh, elsewhere, because there's some serious weirdness going on, you guys. Uh, first of all, do you remember the guy that I told you about yesterday who had snot running out of his face and it was so disgusting? And I yes. just, oh, the guy, the guy that was telling people how to squat. He, the he, and of course, he's an illegal from Venezuela. Of course. Um, he is now on the run and he's oh. terrifying and disgusting and god knows where so just wanted to make sure everybody knew that because you know this is he's on the run but yet if i didn't run. if i didn't pay like 20 dollars in taxes they would track my ass down in like two seconds and put me in jail exactly how, how is that possible it's, it's just it's it's so infuriating yeah um and then also this is what's happening not just in <clears throat> pittsburgh but in a lot of other cities where now they're so short-staffed on police because of the whole defund the police movement and all the hating of police um now there are only according to this there were 20 police officers patrolling the entire city of pittsburgh from 3 a.m to 7 a.m oh so they have God. decided if you call in those hours for things like theft, harassment, criminal mischief, or burglary, or alarms, or whatever, they are not coming. Yeah, well, they're just gonna take. They're just gonna send you off to a dispatcher to talk on the phone to. Yeah, we'll send you a social worker. Remember that? Oh my god. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. I mean, this is getting really, really bad. You guys. <clears throat> yeah, really, is, really I'm, bad. This, this is the thing. This is why I. I mean, I'm so glad I don't live in a gigantic city. <gasps> right. Oh my god. Oh, my yeah. God. And mm -hmm. it's getting it's getting worse and worse. And um, so, you know, we started seeing these videos yesterday about how these people walking down the street in New York City are just getting randomly punched in the face. And so I wanted people to keep in mind that this is happening while <laughs> Democrats are trying to tell everyone that crime rates are down. And I know we've talked about this before, but they're using data to support that claim because they're using data that only counts prosecuted crimes and not just crimes that happen and then don't get prosecuted by the likes of Letitia James and Alvin Bragg. <clears throat> so people need to be aware when they hear that stat that cr violent crime is down. It's all a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. So I just wanted to point that out before you hear this little montage of what's happening to girls in New York. So here is this montage. But like, I didn't realize I was part of a group of women that got punched. What? I literally, I literally just got punched by some man on the sidewalk. So I just got punched in the face. Oh my God. Walking home. I was literally like, you guys, I was literally just walking and a man came up and punched me in the face. Oh, I mean, so I saw those that was on Twitter, right? Then I go to um, TikTok last night. And of course, because the algorithm, my phone is watching me. China's watching me. They know everything I look at. Right. They all I saw last night. Punch videos. Saw, punch videos. Oh, I mean, over and over. And not those four women, but like other, other women. women. So many women. Oh, Getting my punched. God. And it was, was it just in New York City? Was it other cities too? Probably other cities. Well, I think this, the ones that I was seeing were from New York City. New York. Because apparently there's like a rat, there's like a whole spate of them right now in New York City. And some women were speculating, well, it's maybe it's because I was on my phone and I wasn't paying attention. But no, some of these women were like, just walking, looking where they were going. And these guys come up from behind and just punch them um, on top of the head or on the side of the head. It's <sighs> horrific. And you God. don't see them coming unless you have eyes in the back of your head, which nobody does. This just enrages me. It <sighs> enrages me. Like, teach your daughters to fight back. I would wail. And you can't even carry mace or anything in New York City. You, you can't, can't carry. carry mace? You can't carry I don't think mace so. there? Or like a taser? I don't think you can do that. Oh my God! You can't you can't carry mace. I hopefully you can carry mace. I like I feel like there's certain things you're not allowed. Like to, I know I you can't. You can. I know you can't carry a gun, but I mean, yeah. Try that in Texas. 
God, Try it's, it. it's so horrific. And, and so many women, I mean, I could not believe how many women have gone through this. Now I did read this morning, as, as a matter of fact, there's an article on daily caller that said that one last girl that you saw that had the huge egg on her forehead, the, oh the very God. last girl in that clip, her guy, the guy that um, punched her was caught. And it's a guy that apparently has run for like every office that there is as a super weird black Panther progressive. Oh my God. I and mean, he's out there punching people. He's out there punching people. And it's white women. It seems to be white women from what right. I can tell. I haven't seen this happen to black okay, women if you yet. Can't, if women can't carry, they need to learn to fight back. You know, women can punch too. I mean. We can. It's unbelievable. It's what if just, somebody's a 20-foot 20, 20 bug spray? Yeah. I mean, I listen, there's got to be a way to fight back. Like, you, okay, I'm, they're saying you can carry pepper spray. Or bear okay. spray. Yeah, Max. I like That's insane <sighs> but i mean insane. These guys can if they're using because some of them are using objects that's not just their hands and if that's the case you may not have a chance to fight if someone yeah. com is coming up from behind you one of the girls i think in fact that last girl in fact i think is the one that ended up going to the hospital finding out she has a concussion so i mean they're this is like absolutely terrifying that you don't get it's not one of those things where you can just say, keep your head on a swivel because right. no one can keep their head on that kind of swivel. No, you, you know can't. I mean? No, I, you're a sitting duck. You're an absolute Horrendous. sitting duck. Well, I mean, I just, I could not imagine living in New York City anyway. There's no way I would want to live. People have just but, lost their humanity entirely. Every, yeah, you're absolutely right, Ma. Yeah, they have. I mean, it's, it, but men just going and randomly punching women. What is going on with men? Right? It's like, bad. what? Yeah, what in the hell? It's like, listen, I'm not saying that there's an excuse for men going and punching other men either, because you're right, the lack of humanity. But since when did it become okay for men to just go up and start punching women? Yeah. What is going on? Like, it's, that's, uh, and then where are the other men protecting those women? Where well, are they? Well, I'm so glad you said that because let me show you one. This was one of the videos that I saw on TikTok last night, and I was like, thank you. Thank you to this guy. The comments are hilarious because he's a good looking fella. And so all these women are like, um, can you be my friend, please? Here is this guy. So I'm picking up my friend right now because she texted me and was like, all this shit happening right now in New York with women getting punched and awful shit. She was like, do you mind walking me to the train from where I am right now? And I was like, duh, of course. He's so, adorable. Isn't he? He's adorable. As fucked up as this shit is, which is so dumb yeah maybe i have a little business that i'm gonna start walk with ethan mm -hmm. I'm, I'm funny i'm nice we can talk <laughs> i'll fucking <laughs> smack some motherfucker in the face it's true and it's true. yeah just go out of the way right now for your friends that are girls Mm -hmm. Good man. That's that. a that's a good man right there. Yeah. I mean, he shouldn't do it as a business. He should just. Do Why? It I think this is great. Well, I mean, men should be doing it just because they're men. men but what if you're a woman that doesn't know very many people in the city? I would love to have this. Okay. As a way I mean, to that's, take care. That's fine, Mock. But I mean, like the fact that like they have to charge women to do it. Men should just be doing it because they do it because that's what men freaking do. You know what I mean? They shouldn't be doing it because, I mean, I get it. Like nowadays there's a see a need, fill a need. And so here's a business. I'm going to make a ton of money doing it. But like the fact that he has to do it or he's thinking that it would be a good business model because we're lacking so much in, in masculinity that men aren't stepping up and doing it. And so he's going to do it. And we're like, oh, that guy's so great. He's going to do that. It used to be that men just did it. <laughs> You know what I mean? There weren't men out there beating up women on the street. And then if there were, men would be like, what are you doing, dude? I'm going to beat the shit yeah. out of you. You know, like, don't do that. And that would actually deter jerks like the guys who are doing this from doing this. It's like, what is our world? What is it? Is it well, right? it is the way that it is. And so I am all for guys doing businesses like that for women that don't know anybody in the city and just want to be able to walk somewhere and feel safe and protected. I, I mean, I, I would hear you. That. I would totally I hear you. It. But I mean, God, make more guy friends. I even said that to my daughter yesterday. We were talking about this. She's getting ready. She'll be going to high school next year. And she was talking about making new friends in school. And I'm like, you know, it's not a bad idea to have some guy friends. I had, sure. a lot of, I had a lot of guy friends in high school because she has a lot of girlfriends, you know, and, and that, and I'm very grateful for that. She has a wonderful 
wonderful group of girlfriends that are, you know, they're really supportive. They're great girls and very grateful. I'm very grateful for that for her. But I said, it's not a bad idea to have a couple guy friends. And she was like, really? And we talked about that a little bit. And I said, you know, I, I loved my guy friends. They were great. It's a different perspective. You know, they're, they're different kinds of friends. I'm still friends with them now, the guy friends that I had in high school. And you know, it's, that's not a bad idea. And no, all, it's a I great idea. Women and I, should have. I women. loved yeah. the boys in, in high school. I loved mm -hmm. having guy friends. Yeah. I love that. And you should have them in your life. Women should have guy friends that are there for them to support them. And not just for cases like this, but just in life. Mm -hmm. It's important for men and women to be friends. For sure. Mm -hmm. Karen Serencioni. Thank you. Karen says, ladies, driving to South Carolina now and stopping at Bucky's. What is it that you both talk about getting there? The beaver, beaver nuggets. nuggets. You got to get beaver nuggets. They're so good. Gotta get them. But you're also, addicted. if you're having a meal, get yourself the chicken, the spicy chicken sandwich. <sighs> they have great. Well, in Texas, I don't know if they have it everywhere, but in Texas, they have great, just great barbecue sandwiches. Oh, yeah. They, really have, it. Good they have it. They have it everywhere. Over. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. my husband always gets. Always good barbecue sandwiches. <sighs> they're everything. And the fountain drinks are somehow just extra good there. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. And everything they're nuts. Is, they're nuts that are like, you know, the roasted nuts with like the sugar stuff on them. Oh, my God. <laughs> and so then if good. you don't, even if you don't need to go to the bathroom, just go. Just mm -hmm. take an opportunity to experience the Bucky's bathroom. It's cleaner than your house. For real. I assure Jose you. Rodriguez, thank you. Jose says they should rename Pictionary to Frictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Jose. It's so true. We got to meet so you. So true. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Uh, did I get everybody? I think. Oh, no, I didn't. Kat Stotler. Thank you. Kat says at Texas A&M, the, the core has a volunteer program where they walk women students to their cars and classes. You call a number and they show up. That's Fantastic. awesome. I love that, that so much. My awesome. daughter goes there. She will be using that. Yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. awesome. And Andrea Viola. Thank you. Andrea says men have been bastardized and dehumanized by women for decades. This is the result. The prophecy of I don't need no man is complete. It's so true a great point 100 percent correct great, great point. we actually do we do need men oh yeah we do absolutely <laughs> yeah okay you guys one more show one more show uh, before vacation so just a mm -hmm. reminder we're not going to be here next week we'll be with you on eclipse day um getting all excited about eclipse day and uh tomorrow we will be having the lesbian taco segment <laughs> and then also <laughs> Also, we're going to be recording with Sean Spicer today for his yeah, show. Are. So that's we're exciting. That. We're doing that in like an hour. So yeah, yeah. not even. Get yeah. ready for that. Yeah. So get ready so for that. Be on the lookout for that too. Bring it in. You guys bring it in. Oh, and I have one gift that I need to. Oh, you do? Okay. I do. I do. All right, bring I do. It. She'll do a gift. I probably, I really do need to get to my PO box. I have not done that in weeks. So I probably yeah, should. Yeah, you it. need to. Yikes. Um, You guys, I told you yesterday, Mean Jean had written and said she's sending an Easter package. And did she ever? So, first of all, a whole thing of Easter s'mores. Oh my gosh. Cutest little gift bag ever from Mean Jean, where she sent me bunny ear. So cute. She sent peeps. Uh, I love. I love peeps. Jelly beans. Oh my God. And this adorable little holder that had a uh, Cracker Barrel gift card in it. Oh which my is God. So exciting because. We always take the boys on spring break. That's where we go have breakfast. Are you the serious? No. So oh, it's like yay. to you, we love Cracker Barrel. Are you kidding me? I love, love, I love, love Cracker Barrel too. This cute little floofy thing um, that will chirp so when you cute. like. Did you hear that? Yes. It's a little so chirpy thing. sweet. Um, Jean. m and carrots or Reese's Pieces. Oh my God. Those are my favorite. Reese's Pieces are my favorite. And then these two. So yeah, Robin eggs. Robin eggs. Oh my God, Robin eggs guys. are awesome. Mean Jean. So mean Jean. I just You're can't too even much. You. Just too, too, too much. much. Too love much. all the stuff. I'm gonna eat my face off. So I know. I love the ears. I love the ears. <laughs> I am in my ears. You guys have a <laughs> wonderful Thursday, and we will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.